at age 21, I decided to start learning a new musical instrument every year. By the way, that used to be my fun fact, until the responsibilities of adulthood hit me in the face. And these days, my fun fact is that there used to be a time when I had a cool fun fact. <laughs> Thank you, adulthood. And that was my entry point into the relationship between music and innovation. Why am I talking about this today? I believe to innovate on the next frontier, we need to start seeking solutions from unconventional places, making connections between seemingly unconnected fields. We need to start paying attention to the tacit frequencies around us. Why music in particular? Well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but I believe music is worth a thousand pictures. And now I know some iPhone 13 Pro users in the audience would most likely disagree with this, but that's totally fine. So I love music. I enjoy learning musical instruments. I play the piano, the saxophone, the recorder, and the African drums. I've also been fortunate to invent technologies in self-driving cars, soft robotics, and now food tech. And in many ways, music has been an integral source of inspiration for innovation for me. And today, I'd like to share with you what that correlation means for me. You see, the first thing about music is that it's made up of a set of predefined notes. And what musicians try to do is use these notes to create something that is hopefully beautiful. To do that, they need to understand how each of these notes sound and how they are arranged in a particular instrument. You can think about these as initial and boundary conditions. Of course, we're at MIT. What's phenomenal about initial and boundary conditions is that they form the basis of innovation. Every innovation starts with the innovator understanding what is true of the world today and what the limits of these truths are. It is only by knowing the box and its bounds that we can think outside of it. Furthermore, music is all about combinations, a combination of notes, a combination of instruments to create waves of consonance and dissonance, spirals of symmetry and asymmetry interwoven into the piece of art. And combining ideas is key to innovation. The most effective innovations in history are the ones in which the innovators have found intelligent ways to synthesize concepts from different disciplines. This is because combining ideas enables us to go beyond the boundary conditions of existing systems. What I find the most striking about music is that it's not intended to be standalone. Music is usually written and performed with an audience in mind. And this brings about the aspect of intentionality and purpose. That's why when I think of innovation, I think of purpose. I believe that the innovations that truly push frontiers are the ones with a soul. Let me tell you a story of what that has meant for me. So I grew up in Cameroon. As you can see, I'd been preparing for MIT for quite some time. <laughs> After high school, I immigrated to the US. And what happens when you leave one country and start living in another is that you start experiencing life in juxtapositions, comparing every experience you have with one, in one place with what you would have had in the other. And sometimes, that leads to novel perspectives. 
An example of what that meant for me was discovering the importance of a certain tropical root vegetable known as cassava. Cassava is extensively cultivated in the tropics. Over 20 million farmers depend on it for income. And when I came to the US, what I saw was a growing health and wellness food market and health limitations of current ingredients like wheat, leading co consumers to look for alternatives. And recently, the situation has shifted from one of providing healthy alternatives to one of a fundamental food insecurity problem with the current destabilization in the global wheat supply chain. This has made alternatives like cassava even more relevant globally. But we have a problem. Cassava deteriorates three days after harvest. As a result, a majority of cassava farmers live in extreme poverty, despite cassava's global relevance. This sounded like dissonance to me. And like most MIT students, I rolled up my sleeves, got my hands dirty, and founded Casvita. At Casvita, we invented a novel post-harvest technology for increasing the shelf life of cassava from three days to 18 months. As a result, farmers are able to monetize more of their harvest and attain the skill advantage of participating in the global market. We currently partner with a community of over 500 farmers and have been able to increase their earnings by 400%. That's five times, meaning the income a family could earn in five years, they now earn in only one year and can provide better health care and education opportunities for themselves and their children. 95% of our farmers are women. And by increasing their earnings, we're simultaneously closing the gender wage gap, giving women power and authority in their homes and their communities. But how were we able to do this? We had to start by understanding the initial conditions of the community we we're working with, which was poverty as a result of rapid post-harvest deterioration of a globally relevant crop. Like the synthesis involved in creating music, we realized that we needed a combination of skills to solve this problem. We needed to understand the chemistry of cassava, we needed to understand its boundary conditions, which are the internal and external conditions that were responsible for the spoilage. We knew that with biotechnology, we could go beyond the boundary conditions. We also needed to understand anthropology, to know these communities we're working in. And coming from the communities ourselves and being proximate to the problem, we're able to tailor our solutions to meet the needs of the community. So far, this experience has felt really beautiful, an experience that's similar to the one I get when I listen to some of my favorite pieces or play some of my favorite sounds on the piano or the saxophone. The purpose at the center of our work is what keeps me innovating, even through the throths of the entrepreneurial experience, because I cannot think of a better way to live than to work towards a purpose that is bigger than myself. I have found inspiration in music, a field that is not directly related to my work. And through this experience, I have learned that to innovate on the next frontier, I have to look in unconventional places. Where will you look to innovate on the next frontier? Thank you. Woo! Woo! 
Woo! Woo!